Well, you can probably tell that I'm vertically challenged, so I'm going to uh, turn the microphone this way. So, um, good morning. Thank you, Senator Isaacson and congressional members for allowing us the opportunity to be here. My colleagues from the uh, other service academies, as well as each and every one of you, it is an honor for me to be up here today. Um, again, I'm Carolyn Benishek. I'm the Director of Admissions and uh, have the opportunity to probably talk to every student in this audience, which is going to be a challenge, but uh, we'll make sure we try to do that. Um, one of the things that uh, um, most people probably forget is the fact that we are the only Federal Service Academy that is west of the Mississippi. So we're nestled in the foothills in Colorado Springs, Colorado. How many folks know where that is? Okay, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Um, probably don't know unless I know there are a couple of families who now have graduating, um, folks that are graduating from the Service Academy that uh, we actually sit at 7,258 feet above sea level, far, far above that of West Point and Annapolis. So don't forget that, okay? All right, so I'm actually going to cede most of the time that we have available to chat with you to two outstanding young Georgia alums. We have uh, Cadet Brooke Wheeler from Swanee, who is 29 days from graduating from the United States Air Force Academy. And Second Lieutenant Charles Ailey, who I've had the opportunity to work with this past year, who works in the admissions office and uh, is really, truly an inspiration to many. Um, and as you heard, he will be going off to, to work in security forces. But uh, I'm going I'm to cede my time and allow them to, uh, to talk to you a little bit about their experiences. We're also, at 1230 today, going to have an Air Force Academy-specific um, conversation at Ver Verholz. Hall that's near Dobbins Inn, um, and so anybody that wants a little more specifics about the application process specific to the Air Force Academy, come out and join us, and again, that's at 1230. Um, I just need to say one thing before I, before I jump off the stage. For each and every one of you, any of the Surface Academies, they're all great, but you need to know which Service Academy is specific for you. So I would encourage you to do the research, understand the types of jobs. We all, they're different. Our, our, our environments are very different. If you have an opportunity to come visit us, please do. Um, again, they're all great educations, but you need to figure out what is best for you. Not for Uncle Bobby, Aunt Sue, Grandma Kim. It's really about each and every one of you. So if you can take nothing else away from today, Whatever you do, when you start to apply, make sure that you're doing it for the right reason and for the right service academy and ultimately for the right service because we're going to ask you to lead. We're going to ask you to lead people in the best military service ever in the world. Okay? So, Brooke. Good morning. I'm Cadet First Class Brooke Wheeler. And as Colonel Benishik um, just mentioned, I'm about to graduate in about a month. So that's exciting for me. I will be a fin financial manager in the Air Force once I graduate, uh, stationed in Columbus, Mississippi for my first base. A little bit about how I got to this point. Um, my brother was a 2010 grad, and so I got to see his experience through the academy and I actually did not get accepted into the academy the first time I applied, but I got a Falcon Foundation scholarship to go to the prep school, um, a prep school, and I went to Northwestern Prep School in California. And that was the fall semester, and the second semester I had the opportunity to go to the University of Georgia uh, before accepting my appointment to go to the academy after that. So I had a quite um, a variety of experiences before going to the academy, um, which kind of formed and developed my uh, process up until now. Um, I am a management major and was a swim team walk-on and swam for four years at the academy. And like Colonel Benishek mentioned, the altitude feels different when you're swimming at 7,200 feet above sea level than when you're 
um, in this nice, humid Georgia air. So um, that was a great experience, but throughout the time at the Academy, um, I've had a world of ups and downs and great experiences, and I think, I guess, the biggest thing that I kind of wanted to say today was I feel pretty confident to say that your experience at um, probably any of the academies, but what I know of the Air Force Academy, will um, be far above, I believe, any other experience that you could have in a university. And I've been challenged more than I know I ever would have been challenged at a university, and I've had more opportunity uh, than I ever would. And I can say that because I've been to University of Georgia, which was a great experience. Um, but some of what I've gotten to do at the Academy, um, I've traveled a lot with being a part of the swim team all over um, the US. I've got to um, fly in a soaring plane. Um, I got to jump out a perfectly good airplane with nothing but myself and a parachute. And I got the opportunity to volunteer to be tased on ops. So a variety of different experiences that made my um, experience. And I, um, I also broke the sound barrier in a T-38. That's the other one <laughs> on ops. So a variety of opportunities. I don't know that um, somebody at UGA could say the same about a lot of those things. But it's really just developed the person um, that I am today, and I look forward to serving this country and um, just leading as an officer in, in a few short days. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Lieutenant Ailey now. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lieutenant Ailey. So I'm from Jackson, Georgia. We got anybody from that area in here? Just a few. It's pretty small, I know. Uh, it was small when I was going there too. So, we always play a video in our tours for the Air Force Academy. And one of the things that uh, the young lady in the video says at the very end is, she's a senior at the Academy, she always says, I'm still me, but I'm a better me. I always like to bring that up because going to the Air Force Academy, A, it was the first time I was ever on an airplane, is when I went and visited the Air Force Academy. We never went west of the Mississippi River. They don't have sweet tea. Why would I have went there, right? As a kid. So my family didn't really go west of there. And uh, when I got on the airplane the first time and I flew out to Colorado Springs, I got off the airplane. And it was like 85 degrees in Georgia. And it was like 30 degrees in Colorado when I got off the plane. It's the coldest weather I ever experienced. And um, when I was there and visiting the Air Force Academy, it blew me away. It was the prettiest campus I've ever visited in my entire life. It really was. I visited all the campuses here in Georgia. But it was also the scariest moment of my entire life because that's the moment when I visited the Air Force Academy that I decided I was going to the Air Force Academy. The reason it's scary is because I'm from a small town here in Georgia. I was scared to death to leave my family. I really was. My whole family is within a 10 mile radius of each other and nobody really leaves my town. So it scared me. My dad was there with me, so was my mom, and they both supported me through it. Uh, but it still scared me, and it scared me for the first year I was at the Academy. I'm going to be honest with you, the only reason I made it through the Air Force Academy was because of the bonds and the friendships you make while you're at the Air Force Academy are unlike anything you're going to make to this point of your life or any other college, I can honestly say that. Um, so, a few things that I had to work on coming from Jackson, Georgia, out to Colorado Springs is the altitude. Uh, I was a football player, I wrestled in high school. I, I really thought I was in shape until I tried to run at Colorado. Uh, trust me, it will show you real quick you're not. So, one of the most important things that I can leave everybody with is personal fitness doesn't start when you get to the Air Force Academy or any of the other academies. If your first push-up is done when you show up to basic training at, Air, at the Air Force Academy, you're going to have a lot of fun. I promise, right? So we need to make sure that you're doing your personal fitness now. If you can't get to the gym, go run. Do some push-ups, do some sit-ups. 
Uh, one of the things that I struggled with at the Air Force Academy was academics. I don't even think my high school had calculus at the time when I was going through, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but I didn't get into the Air Force Academy my first time either. I went to the Air Force Academy's preparatory school. And it was the best program I ever went through in my entire life. It's a 10-month program that's dedicated to academic improvement. And it is honestly the only reason I graduated from the Air Force Academy. I came from a small town, Jackson, Georgia. I've said that. I graduated from the Air Force Academy. I'm about to be a security forces officer. I get to be in charge of 80 people that are going to be under me once I get out of tech school. I'm also going to go be in charge of the security of America's nuclear weapons. I've traveled to seven different countries all around the world. I never got on an airplane until I went to the Air Force Academy. It was the scariest thing I ever did, but it was the best decision I ever made to broaden my life, truthfully. And for all of you out there that are looking at any of the academies right now, in four years or five years, when you're standing in my position, I promise you all, you're going to say the exact same thing. It was the best decision I ever made in my entire life. So thank you, everyone. We are going to have our event at 1230. I hope to see all of you there.